All right, folks, welcome to your first homework assignment. We will today be discussing matter. That's right, matter. As you go through the presentation, watching your video, uh, you will need to write down the things that are underlined. These will be the things you need to add to your notes. So make sure that you are paying attention. If you need to pause to write, then pause to write. All right, here we go, talking about matter. Matter is, of course, anything that has mass and takes up space. And when I say it takes up space, I mean that it has volume. And uh, mass, obviously measured with the triple beam balance, and volume measured with graduated cylinders, uh, measured by measuring the length, width, and height of an object. But uh, you just know that volume means it takes up space. So matter, anything that has mass and takes up space, pretty much covers everything in the universe except for energy. We will get to that much, much later. All right, now it's important to discern or determine the difference between mass and weight. I feel like uh, often when you think of mass, you also think of it as the same thing as weight. Mass and weight are not the same thing. Mass is a measurement of how much of something is there. Uh, weight is, however, the effect of gravity pulling down on that mass, which is why you may have heard often that you weigh more on the Earth than you do on the Moon. That, of course, is because the Moon is smaller and it has less gravity. Therefore, there's less force pulling down on you on the Moon so you have less weight. So mass is actually the measurement of the stuff that is there, whatever that stuff is, and weight is the measurement of gravity pulling down on that stuff. So suppose I was holding a marker, uh, maybe an Expo marker, and I asked you, does this marker have the same mass on the Earth as it does on the Moon? Hopefully your answer would be absolutely yes. It does have the same mass because the marker stuff does not change between Earth and the Moon. And if I asked you if it had the same weight on the Earth as it does on the Moon, you would hopefully say no. Because there's less gravity on the Moon, therefore it's going to weigh less on the Moon. So. It's important to know the difference between mass and weight as we move forward talking about matter because we're discussing things that have mass and take up space. Here we go, the difference between mass and weight a little more closely. Mass, once again, as you can see here, measured with a triple beam balance. Okay, it's the amount of stuff that is there. It stays the same. Does not change because the things that are there are still there. We express mass in grams. Weight, however, uh, you can measure it with a scale. This is a spring scale that we often use in science. Uh, once again, it measures the gravitational force. Okay, gravitational force depends on where an object is. Different places on Earth have different gravitational forces, and obviously, different places in the universe have different gravitational forces. So weight varies. It changes. Okay, once again, we can use a spring scale. And we talk about weight in the units of newtons. Newtons is a unit that measures force. And we will talk more about that later this year. All right, so let's talk about atoms. Atoms, atoms, atoms. The building blocks of all matter. It is what everything is made of. The smallest pieces of us are atoms. Okay, we have several different uh, pictures here of atoms. You can see the atom here. This would be the nucleus of the atom. And then here are things orbiting that atom that we will talk about very soon. Once again, a nucleus things orbiting in multiple directions. And then here is a more flat style picture, once again with the nucleus containing protons and neutrons. And then this outer area with these electrons orbiting it. So that's what an atom kind of looks like if we could see it, which we cannot see an atom. Uh, but that's what they would look like if we could see them. That is our theory of what they would look like if we could see them. 
atoms, the building blocks of all matter. It's what everything is made of. The very smallest piece of what everything is made of. So let's go deeper. Let's talk more about atoms. Let's talk about models. Okay, in science, we create models. We create models so that we can see things and touch things and manipulate things that we really cannot. Uh, so I can't touch an atom. I can't manipulate an atom. But I can create a model of an atom that I absolutely can touch and manipulate and move around. <clears throat> okay, so we can construct models to determine the behavior of things that we can't actually necessarily see. Okay, the accepted model of the atom that we use in science is called the Bohr model of the atom. It's kind of that flat picture that you see right here. It's the flat picture of the atom, right? It's got the nucleus. You might remember nucleus of a cell from seventh grade life science. The nucleus in the center Inside that nucleus, we have protons and neutrons. Protons and neutrons in the nucleus. And outside the nucleus orbiting, we have electrons. All right, the nucleus has protons. This little plus here means protons have a positive charge. And neutrons, the zero here means that neutrons are neutral. Hopefully you can remember that. Protons, positive neutrons zero or neutral and then once again the electrons here in this outer energy level uh, with a negative charge orbiting the nucleus orbiting the nucleus so once again atoms three basic parts protons neutrons and electrons here is a great Bohr model of a carbon atom. Hopefully we've all heard of carbon. Uh, if not, you will absolutely hear about that this year. This is a carbon atom. It has six protons and six neutrons. Those are located, of course, in the nucleus. Protons with a positive charge, neutrons with a neutral charge. And then you see the electrons uh, are surrounding, orbiting that nucleus. Electrons, there are six of those as well. One, two, three, four, five, and six. They are in these orbitals orbiting the nucleus. All right, we definitely need to make sure this chart right here makes it into our notes. Very, very important here. Okay, once again, atoms, protons, neutrons, and electrons. But in addition to that, there is a lot of empty space. A good thing that you can imagine if you're thinking about an atom, you might imagine an atom being like our solar system. The sun might represent the nucleus of our atom, and then those planets can represent what would be like electrons. And if you know about space, which hopefully you've learned a little bit about space, space is filled with tons of emptiness. There's lots of area where there's absolutely nothing there. Atoms are very similar to that. In fact, there was one scientist, very funny, one scientist, when he figured out that there was so much empty space in an atom, he actually became afraid that he was going to fall through things because there was so much empty space. But there is not enough empty space for us to fall through. We cannot put our hands through tables or desks. And we'll talk more about that in class. But lots of empty space in atoms. Okay, so let's remember our proton, positive charge, located in the nucleus. It is one atomic mass unit. The atomic mass unit was designed or made up just specifically to talk about the mass of the parts of an atom. So a proton is one atomic mass unit. A neutron, also in the nucleus, folks. It has a neutral charge. It does not have a charge. Okay, and its mass is a little more than a proton. Not much, a little bit more. And the electron with the negative charge orbiting the nucleus in energy levels, orbiting in energy levels or orbitals, and they have a mass of almost nothing. They are very, 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 very tiny. They have almost no mass at all. Moving on. Protons. Why are they important? Protons are very important to the atom. Okay, once again, protons with that positive charge. Okay, the number of protons... This is why they're so important. The number of protons determines the kind of atom. Okay, so you know what kind of atom it is just by the number of protons. Okay, no two atoms in the world have the same number of protons, unless, of course, they are the same kind of atom. So different kinds of atoms cannot have the same number of protons. 
Okay, atoms are identified by their atomic number. We identify them by their atomic number, and that is the number of protons. So the atomic number of an atom is absolutely unique to that atom, and the atomic number tells us the number of protons. Okay, so the number of protons in an atom is its atomic number. Here we have a helium atom. It has one, two protons, which means its atomic number is, anyone, anyone? Absolutely, it is two. The atomic number is two. Here's a lithium uh, atom having one, two, three protons. I can tell that because they have the pluses telling me that they are positively charged protons. One, two, three of those, that is the atomic number, three. And neutrons, neutrons have a neutral charge. Neutrons have a neutral charge. They contribute to the mass of an atom, just like protons. Protons and neutrons are the majority of the mass of an atom. Um, the total mass of the atom is called the atomic mass. So your mass of your protons, neutrons, and electrons together is the atomic mass. It's the total mass of that atom. It's another way that we can refer to that atom. We can talk about its atomic mass. Okay. Uh, if you round the atomic mass of an element and you subtract the number of protons, that'll tell you the number of neutrons. So we'll show you how to do that in class. Uh, looking at the periodic table, which we'll talk about later, it tells us the atomic number. It tells us the atomic mass. Uh, the atomic number, once again, tells us the number of protons. So using the atomic number and the atomic mass, we can determine the number of neutrons. So there's all kinds of information we can learn about atoms just from the atomic number and the atomic mass. Very, very important information that we can learn. All right, neutrons are also important because they are responsible for what we call isotopes. Isotopes is a very, very important word. It's a very important part of atoms. Um, an atom that might be missing a neutron or maybe one that has an extra neutron, more than it's supposed to, uh, those are called isotopes. Isotopes form in nature through what is called radioactive decay. You may have heard about radioactive decay. Uh, it's why we use something called carbon dating. Some of you that are interested in dinosaurs, when we talk about determining how old dinosaur fossils are, we sometimes use carbon dating because we know the exact way that carbon decays radioactively, the, the way that carbon decays or breaks down so we can tell exactly how long it takes. So if we examine those fossils, we can determine how long they have been there by how much they, the carbon in them has decayed. Okay, there's three very common carbon isotopes. They are carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. Okay, carbon-12 is not an isotope because it is the basic carbon atom. As you can see here, 98.9% .9 of carbon atoms are carbon-12. However, there's carbon-13 and there's carbon-14, very small amounts of these, and they are isotopes. They have more neutrons than your average carbon atom does. So once again, more or less neutrons is an isotope. Okay, you have your regular atom, more or less, these are more neutrons is an isotope. It doesn't change the kind of atom because once again, as you see here, the protons are the same. So it's still the same kind of atom. However, the neutrons have changed. So if the neutrons have changed, can anyone guess what else has changed? Absolutely, it is the mass. The mass of that atom has changed. It is an isotope. It, these are more massive than the regular carbon-12, more massive, okay? But if there were less neutrons, maybe it'd be carbon-11 if it only had five neutrons, uh, that would be less massive, okay? So neutrons help us to determine isotopes. Uh, electrons, very important, very important electrons they are. Uh, they have negative charges, and once again, they are on the outside of the atom. They are occurring in uh, orbitals. We also call them energy levels or energy shells, okay? They surround the atom. The negative charge of the neutron, not the neutron, the negative charge of the electron is attracted to the positive charge of the proton. Uh, and that's why they stay in these orbitals. That's why they don't fly off. They stay here because they're attracted to that positive charge. Electrons are very important because they determine how atoms react with 
other atoms.